If you've ever wondered how the big fireworks work that you see at a public display that give you all the oohs and ahs, you've come to the right place. But first, I'm gonna start by dispelling a myth about the fireworks that you see at a professional fireworks display. Now, a lot of people think that they're large skyrockets, they're big skyrockets that go up and explode in the sky. But in reality, they're actually fired out of mortars, kind of like a cannonball being fired out of a cannon. And we do this for one main reason, because of safety. A rocket, once you light it, if it veers off in an undesirable direction, it's still being propelled. The mortar shell is only going to continue going in the direction in which that mortar was originally pointed. So now let's get into the fun stuff. Let's, let's, let's see how an actual aerial shell or mortar shell works in the professional firework world. So what I have here is an example of an eight inch diameter professional firework shell. This is what they would actually look like. And you have your quick match fuse, the shell itself and the lift charge at the very bottom. And so if we spin this around, you can see that this is a cutaway and what it would actually look like inside of that shell. So let's start from the top here. This quick match fuse actually has what's called black match inside of it. Now this would um, be a cotton string impregnated with black powder and that alone would burn about two to three seconds an inch. But as soon as it hits this paper tubing, it increases the burn rate from two to three seconds an inch to 30 to 100 feet a second. So then this flashes very rapidly down into the lift cup down here at the bottom. Now, this is literally just a baggie of granular black powder that's meant to produce a lot of hot gases very quickly underneath the shell so that it accelerates it out of that mortar up into the sky very rapidly. The other uh, function of the black powder is to ignite the time fuse on the shell. So that's this straw right here. So it's like a straw with black powder inside that does not spit fire out the sides. So that straw or time fuse is ignited and it's burning into the center of the shell as the shell is flying up into the sky. When it reaches its apogee, the time fuse will spit fire into the center of the shell, into this burst charge, which is represented by this blue material here. The burst charge is rice holes coated with a composition that's very similar to black powder um, that burns very rapidly. Uh, they use the rice holes so that it's very, very granular and the flame and the heat can travel between those granules very quickly. And so that burst, now it does two things. It ignites all of the contents inside the shell, so all these different stars and effects, and it rapidly creates an overpressure inside, inside the shell. That causes the shell casing to fail, uh, which is the explosion that you see in the sky. So something else you'll notice about the time fuse is this green string at both the bottom and the top and that's known as cross matching. And what that uh, is for is to ensure that the time fuse ignites when that black powder charge fires the shell out of the mortar and so that um, we ensure the burst charge ignites by having plenty of additional exposed fuse that's physically connected to that time fuse. So that if that time fuse spitting fire out the front into the shell doesn't quite do the job, that additional uh, cross match will. So these red objects that line the inside of the shell casing are what we call stars. Those are the effects that you see projected out in the sky, different colors and gold glitter. Stars contain chemical compositions that will produce different colors depending on which type of elemental salt they contain. So for example, barium salts produce green, Copper salts produce blue, sodium yellow, strontium red, aluminum, titanium, magnesium will burn white. So on the outside of the stars, there's typically uh, what's called a primer composition, which is essentially black powder. Black powder ignites very easily and 
within the shell when that burst ignites you don't have a lot of time before the casing fails and the star must be ignited by the time that occurs otherwise the star will blow blind this particular example is a round or spherical shell and that will give you a very symmetrical break in the sky so as far as the design of the shell is concerned it's uh, pretty much as simple as how you lay the stars and the effects out inside the shell. So if you wanted a happy face effect, you would have a ring of stars, and then you would have two eyes, and then the happy face. Uh, for this particular example, you have all of these stars, these red ones around the edge, uh, actually go all the way along the inside of the sphere, and you might have a few inserts in the middle, This any center uh, stars are known as a pistol. Um, you could have small shells, so it could be a shell of shells, so you could see the main burst, and then you'll see a few additional breaks in the sky. So there's a, a big variety of effects that you can build into the shell just by how you lay everything out. So the shell casing itself is actually a cardboard hemisphere. The shell builder will take those, fill the contents, he'll put those halves together, and it'll do something similar to paper mache on the outside of the shell until the shell casing is very thick and very strong. And that allows it to contain the pressure once the burst charge ignites in the inside until the pressure gets so high that it causes the big explosion spreading the effects over a large area in the sky. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Everybody have a safe and happy 4th of July.